Let us now take the second model from this topic of number systems which is based on the concept of consecutive numbers. Consecutive numbers are those numbers which come one after the other at regular intervals. Now we have various types of consecutive numbers. Let us first understand these and then we shall take up some examples based on them. The first one here is consecutive natural numbers. So these are those natural numbers which come one after the other. And these can be represented as x, x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3 and so on. That means if the first number is x, then the second consecutive number or the second consecutive natural number would be x plus 1, then x plus 2, x plus 3, x plus 4 and so on. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4. These are consecutive natural numbers. Why? Because we find that these are all in a row 1, 2, 3 and 4 without any gap. So these are called as consecutive natural numbers or they can be called as successive numbers. Similarly 83, 84, 85, 86 even these are consecutive natural numbers or successive numbers. And if you can see here if the first number is taken as x that means if 83 is x then x plus 1 is 83 plus 1 84 x plus 2 will be 83 plus 2 85 x plus 3 will be 83 plus 3 86 and so on. So whenever we solve questions related to consecutive numbers, we should take the first number as x, then the second number be x plus 1, third number is x plus 2 and so on, depending on the number of consecutive numbers that we have. The second one here is consecutive E1 numbers. Now we have already understood what are E1 numbers. E1 numbers are those numbers which are exactly divisible by 2 or which are exact multiples of 2. So whenever we have even numbers in a row without any gap, then such numbers are called consecutive even numbers. For example, 2, 4, 6, 8, all these are consecutive even numbers. And these even numbers can be represented as x, x plus 2, x plus 4, x plus 6 and so on. That means if the first number is x, then the next number should be x plus 2. The third one has to be x plus 4, fourth one will be x plus 6 and so on. And remember, the first number x has to be even. So if we take any even number in place of x, then following x plus 2, x plus 4, x plus 6 will give us consecutive even numbers. For example, 68, 70, 72 and so on. If the first number x is 68, then 68 plus 2, 70 will be the next even number. 68 plus 4, 72 will be the third even number and so on. So the point to be observed here is in between two consecutive even numbers, the difference is always 2. Plus 2 will give the next one. Again plus 2 to this will give the next one. Again plus 2 gives a third one and so on. So that is the reason if the first number is x then the next number should be taken with an addition of 2. Again the third number has to be taken with the addition of 2 on the second number and so on. So x, x plus 2, x plus 4, x plus 6 forms consecutive even numbers provided the first number x is even. Likewise we also have consecutive odd numbers. Now consecutive odd numbers are odd numbers in a row. For example, 1, 3, 5, 7 can be treated as consecutive odd numbers. Why? Because we see they are all one after the other in succession. So these are successive odd numbers or we can call consecutive odd numbers. Now consecutive odd numbers are also represented as x, x plus 2, x plus 4, x plus 6 and so on. Where x is odd. So even consecutive odd numbers can be taken as x, x plus 2, x plus 4, x plus 6 and so on. That means the difference between two consecutive odd numbers is always 2. Plus 2 gives the next number. Again plus 2 on the next number gives the third number. Plus 2 on the third number gives the fourth number and so on. For example, 33, 35, 37. These are three consecutive odd numbers. So if the first number x is 33, then x plus 2, that is 33 plus 2 will give the next number, 35. And x plus 4, that means 33 plus 4, 37 gives the next odd number and so on. So the point to be observed here is consecutive E1 and consecutive odd numbers are always represented as x, x plus 2, x plus 4 and so on where x is even in case of consecutive even numbers and x is odd in case of consecutive odd numbers. And always the difference between two consecutive even or consecutive odd numbers is equal to 2. Let us take the first example here based on the concept of consecutive numbers. The question is the sum of four consecutive even numbers is 44. What is the sum of the original squares of these numbers? So as given here, the sum of four consecutive even numbers is equal to 44. And we need to find out the sum of the squares of those four even numbers. Now as given in the question, let us assume that the four consecutive even numbers are x, x plus 2, x plus 4, and x plus 6. As we have discussed earlier, consecutive even numbers can always be represented as 
x x plus 2 x plus 4 x plus 6 and so on and since there are four numbers we have taken four terms here where x is an even number now the question says sum of these four even numbers is equal to 44 so we can say that x plus x plus 2 plus x plus 4 plus x plus 6 should be equal to 44 so from this we can say 4x plus 2 plus 4 is 6 plus 6 is 12 equals to 44 so very clearly the number x would be equal to 44 minus 12 is 32 32 by 4 is 8 so x is equal to 8 now if the first number x is equal to 8 we know that the next consecutive number next consecutive even number x plus 2 would be 10 then the third consecutive number will be x plus 4 that is equal to 12 and the fourth one will be x plus 6 14 so these are the four original numbers where the sum of all these four numbers is 44 and we are supposed to find out the sum of the squares of these numbers so let us find out the squares of these numbers and then take the sum of those squares to get the required answer so the sum of the first number here that is 8 squared will be equal to 64 10 squared is 100 12 squared is 144 and 14 squared will be equal to 196 so the sum of all these four numbers is the required answer so we can say that the required answer as per the given question will be equal to 64 plus 100 164 164 plus 144 is 308 308 and 196 will be equal to 504 so the answer for this question is 504 one important point which I would like to mention here is instead of finding out the four numbers in this manner we can directly understand that the four numbers are 8, 10, 12 and 14 without writing any of these steps. But for that to happen we need to be clear with the concept of averages. So once you are done with the topic of averages you can easily understand how to decide what are the four numbers when the sum is equal to 44. But since averages is not over as of now let us go by the regular procedure. Let us now take the second example based on consecutive numbers. The question here is the product of two successive numbers is 4, 6, 9, 2. What is the smaller of the two numbers? So as given here the product of two successive numbers that means two consecutive numbers is equal to 4, 6, 9, 2. We need to find out what is the smaller of the two numbers. Now going by the concept we know that the two successive numbers should be x and x plus 1. Remember here it is not specified that they are consecutive even numbers or odd numbers simply it says successive numbers so it should be taken as successive natural numbers so if the first number is x the second number would be x plus 1 and as given in the question the product of these two numbers that means x into x plus 1 is equal to 4692 now here we have an equation with only one variable that is x so one equation in one variable can be solved so if we try to expand this we get x into x x squared plus x minus 4 6 9 2 is equal to 0 so as you can see here this is a quadratic equation in terms of x so by solving this quadratic equation we will get two values of x out of which one most probably would be negative and the other value has to be the answer here but friends solving this quadratic equation is not an easy task and that becomes a lengthy procedure so let us understand how can we solve the question without going by solving the quadratic equation. Now to find out the correct answer for this question that is to find out the smaller number of this question let us eliminate the wrong options from the given options here. For example the question here is what is smaller of the two numbers and if you look at the product the product here is 4 6 9 2 that means the product or the multiplication of two numbers ends with 2. Now if we take option number 1 to be correct that means the smaller number is 69. Very clearly if the smaller number is 69 larger number will be 69 plus 1 70. So if this is smaller larger number would be 70 and 69 into 70 that means one number ends in 9 the other number ends in 0. We know that their product will end with 0 but the given product here ends with 2. So very clearly option number 1 cannot be the answer. Similarly, if you look at option number 2, it says the answer is 62. That means smaller number is 62. If smaller number is 62, larger number has to be 63. Why? Because these are consecutive numbers. So 62 into 63 will be ending in 6. Why? Because when one number ends in 2, the other number ends in 3, their product will end in 6, going by the unit space concept. So 62 into 63 should be ending in 6. But the given product here ends with 2. So very clearly, even second option cannot be the answer. 
when you go for option number 3 here the given number is 68 now if this is the smaller number the larger number has to be 69 so if one number ends in 8 the other number ends in 9 their product 8 into 9 ends with 2 but because 8 into 9 is 72 so 2 will be in the unit space and 7 gets carried forward now if you look at this the product of 68 and 69 ends in 2 and even the given product here is ending with 2 so option number 3 may be the correct answer just because the unit space are matching we cannot say that option 3 is the correct answer directly we also have to verify it before we mark the answer but let us continue and check is it possible that fourth option is correct or not the given answer here is 67 that means again the smaller number is 67 if smaller number is 67 larger number will be 68 and 7 into 8 ends with 6 so very clearly even option number 4 cannot be the answer why because here the product is ending in 6 and our actual product ends with 2 so as you can see here out of the given 5 options 3 are already eliminated that is option number 1 option number 2 and option number 4 cannot be the answers the correct answer has to be either option 3 or option 5 none of this now before we mark option 3 as the answer what we simply need to do is find out the product of 68 and 69 if that comes out to be 4692, this should be taken as a correct answer. Otherwise, option 5 will be the correct answer. And 68 into 69 is actually 4692. So, option 3 will be the correct answer. Now, this product has to be actually multiplied and verified and it actually and it will come out to be 4692. So, we can say that option 3 is the correct answer. If this is not equal to 4692, then option 5 has to be the correct answer. So this is how simply by eliminating the wrong options based on the concept of unit space, you can find out what is the correct answer. In some cases, more than one option may satisfy the last digit that is the unit space. So in such cases, we need to check each of the possible options by multiplying with the next digit and find out which matches with the given product and that has to be taken as the correct answer. Remember, there is no point in solving this quadratic equation as it is going to be a very lengthy procedure. So always it is better that we solve such questions by eliminating the wrong options. Let us now take another interesting example based on consecutive numbers. The question here is the sum of 5 consecutive even numbers is 200. So what is the sum of the next set of consecutive even numbers? So as you can see here for 5 consecutive even numbers the sum is 200 and we are supposed to find out the sum of next 5 consecutive even numbers. Now as discussed earlier the 5 consecutive even numbers can be taken as x, x plus 2, x plus 4, x plus 6 and x plus 8 and the sum of all these 5 numbers is equal to 200 as given in the question here. So if we try to simplify this equation we get 5x plus 2 plus 4 is 6, 6 and 6 is 12 and 8 is 20. So 5x plus 20 is equal to 200. So from this x will be equal to 200 minus 20, 180. 180 by 5 is 36. That means the first number is 36. Now if the first number x is 36, the remaining 4 numbers x plus 2, x plus 4, x plus 6 and x plus 8 will be equal to 38, 40, 42, and 44 so these are the five consecutive numbers which is talking about the sum of these five numbers is equal to 200 and we are supposed to find out the sum of next five consecutive even numbers that means we need to take up the next five consecutive even numbers after 44 and find out the sum of those numbers so if we try to take the next five consecutive even numbers we get 46 48 50 52 and 54 as 46 is the next number which comes after 44 and then followed by 48 50 52 and 54 so these are the five consecutive even numbers which comes after 44 and we need to take the sum of these five numbers and the sum of these five numbers here will be 46 and 54 is 100 48 and 52 is 100 plus 50 is 250 so the sum of next five consecutive even numbers is equal to 250. So this is how you can solve this question in the general procedure. That is by using the consecutive numbers as x, x plus 2, x plus 4, x plus 6 and so on. But friends, if you try to be smart, the same question can be answered without writing any of these steps. We need not even find even a single number to find out the sum of next five consecutive numbers. The important point to be observed here is if we take any 5 consecutive even numbers 
and then try to compare with the next five consecutive even numbers we find that the difference between each pair will be equal to 10. For example, let's take the first five consecutive numbers, consecutive even numbers 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. So if we try to take the next five even numbers, we get 12, 14, 16, 18 and 20. Now if we try to observe 2 and 12, the difference is 10, 4 and 14, the difference is 10, 6 and 16 again, the difference is 10. 8 and 18 the difference is 10 and 10 and 20 the difference is 10 that means the next five consecutive numbers are nothing but 10 more than each of the given consecutive numbers so altogether we have got five tens extra that will make it 50 more than the actual sum so if this sum of these five numbers is equal to a the sum of next five numbers has to be a plus 50 so that is the reason if the sum of 5 consecutive even numbers is 200, it is obvious that the sum of next set of consecutive even numbers should be 200 plus 50. Why? Because each of these numbers will increase by 10 and the total increase will be 50. So directly we can say that the answer should be 200 plus 50 that is equal to 250. So without writing any of these steps and without doing any calculation, we can simply increase the total by 50 to get the required answer. And not only in case of even numbers, but also in case of odd numbers, the same rule is applicable. When we take 5 consecutive odd numbers and take the next 5 consecutive odd numbers, we find that the difference between each pair will be equal to 10. So that is how always, if you can increase the sum by 10, even in this case we observe 36 and 46, 38 and 48, 40, 50, 42, 52, 44, 54, each number is increasing by 10. So total has to increase by 50. So friends, this is how we can answer such questions in a smart way. Before we move on to the next model, I have to mention another important point here. For 5 numbers, if the sum is increasing by 50, doesn't mean that if there are 4 consecutive numbers, the sum will increase by 40. That would be absolutely wrong. Why? Because when there are only 4 numbers, and if you take the next 4 numbers, each number will increase only by 8, but not by 10. For example, let's take 4 consecutive odd numbers 1, 3, 5 and 7. When we take the next 4 consecutive odd numbers that is 9, 11, 13 and 15, we find that in each of these case the numbers have increased by 8. 1 plus 8 is 9, 3 plus 8 is 11, 5 plus 8 is 13, 7 plus 8 is 15. That means when there are only 4 numbers, each number will increase only by 8. So altogether the total will increase by 4 8s that is nothing but 32 so plus 32 will give the required answer so don't have a misconception that for 5 numbers the sum will increase by 50 so for 4 numbers it will be 40 and for 3 numbers it will be 30 and so on you need to check what is the difference between each number and that can be simply done by taking the first 4 consecutive odd numbers or even numbers one simple way to understand how much each number would increase by in such cases would be to count the number of numbers. For example, when there are 4 numbers, we find that each number increases by 8. That is nothing but 4 into 2. Why? Because each consecutive even pair or odd pair will give a difference of 2. So that is the reason the total difference here is 4 into 2, 8. Similarly, when there are 5 numbers, each number gives a difference of 2. So 5 into 2, 10 will be the difference between each pair. So this is how simply understand how much is going to be the difference between each pair and then find out the total difference and add it to the given sum to find out the required answer.